What is up, you freaky folks? My name is Nick, and welcome to my channel, where I cover all things horror, whatever you're watching, I'm making videos about. And every month, I highlight the best movies to watch on all of our favorite streaming services. It's usually my opportunity to talk about non-horror things that I love, but you know in the month of October, I'm finding the best horror movie recommendations for you guys, and some of them are leaving at the end of the month here on HBO Max, so let's get to it so you can get to streaming. Number 10 is Gremlins 2, The New Batch, the sequel to the creature feature Christmas classic that does exactly what sequels do, and it brings back all of our favorite players from the original, but moves them from the suburbs to the big city. But this new batch of Gremlins might be unstoppable. I don't know how we only have two Gremlins movies. It's a damn shame to me. I would be willing to see a remake just to bring the Gremlins back. Just bring them back already. But this movie is leaving at the end of the month, so you don't want to miss it. Number Number nine is It Chapter 2, another sequel, and this one is about the grown-up Losers Club who must return to their hometown in order to finish off Pennywise the Jackass Clown once and for all. I have major problems with this movie, like major problems, but I also champion big budget studio horror because I think we need a lot more of it. Just make sure that you carve out enough time to watch this one because it's damn near three hours long. Number eight is The Conjuring 2, yet another sequel, and this one does the other typical sequel move by sending our protagonists to England to help a new family being terrorized by an entity from beyond the grave. I think we're all at the point where we've reached Conjuring universe overload and I'm perfectly okay with that because I'm done with these movies but I have to say I do enjoy The Conjuring 2 because it has plenty of scares that keep it fun and entertaining throughout again big budget studio horror and this is another one that is leaving at the end of the month but if you do happen to love these Conjuring universe movies they also have The Curse of La Llorona and Annabelle Comes Home I hate both of those. Number seven is Seven, because duh. This 90s thriller from David Fincher stars Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt as detectives investigating a serial killer who commits murders that correlate with the seven deadly sins. If you don't already know the rest, I'll let you discover this favorite for yourself. It is so disturbing yet entertaining at the same time. This movie is damn near perfect for me. To all those people who do those movie reaction videos that seemingly haven't seen a damn good movie in their entire life, they need to start covering seven next because, um... This is something. Number six is The Stepfather. This 80s horror film is about a deranged perfectionist who is obsessed with the image of the ideal family. He kills his own family and assumes a new identity to start over with a single mother and her teenage daughter. I talked about this in my best horror movies on Tubi video, but now it's on HBO Max and it deserves to be mentioned again. This movie is so creepy, it'll get under your skin, but it also has this very solid family dynamic that keeps it grounded. Plus, a solid chase scene at the end, which is all I'm looking for in a good horror movie. Number five is The Others, a supernatural period piece starring Nicole Kidman as the mother of two children who are allergic to sunlight. She keeps them locked away in their spooky old house, but when strange events begin to occur, they believe something paranormal is happening in their home. You guys are probably all too familiar with this movie. I think it is absolutely bone chilling, but I also think it's quite masterful because even knowing the reveal at the end, the the movie works on rewatch with that information in mind, and The Others is leaving at the end of the month, so I have to recommend you watch it if you don't hate it. Number four is Blade Runner. This science fiction cult classic stars Harrison Ford as an investigator tracking four androids who have gone rogue and need to be terminated. This isn't even close to horror, but it's also leaving at the end of the month, so I have to put it out there. This is the final cut they have on HBO Max, which the internet has deemed to be the preferred version of the film. If you haven't already watched Blade Runner, give it a shot. It might take a few views before you find yourself actually liking it, but trust me, it's definitely worth your time. Number three is Dolores Claiborne. This Stephen King adaptation stars Jennifer Jason Leigh as a reporter who returns to her hometown when her mother, played by Kathy Bates, is accused of murdering her employer. The two family members reconnect as old family secrets come to the surface. This is a full-on drama. Just because it's from Stephen King doesn't mean it needs to be scary, but this is such a strong exploration of these characters in their history. It's a tad long, maybe a little bit longer than it needs to be, but it's such a good story that I'm cool with it. This is one of Stephen King's most underseen adaptations that's 
actually good, so show it the love it deserves. Number two is Us, the horror thriller from Jordan Peele that's about the Wilson family who are on a beach vacation when they are attacked by doppelgangers with sinister intentions. This movie is so much fun and has plenty to offer with the dual performances from Lupita Nyong'o and an energetic pace that keeps things interesting all the way until the very end. While I would definitely consider this to be summer horror, any time is a good time to enjoy this instant favorite. Number one is Martha Marcy May Marlene, a psychological drama that is one of my favorite movies ever, and I'm so glad to finally be able to talk about it. Elizabeth Olsen plays Martha, a young woman who has just escaped from a cult. As she tries to start a new life, she finds herself reliving past events that traumatized her and leave her questioning who she really is. This certainly won't be for everyone I know. I remember the first time I watched it, I was like, what the hell did I just watch? But then there was something about it that just had me coming back, and now I can't stop watching it. Great acting, incredible writing, and solid execution make this a psychological cult character study not to be missed. Now it's time for my bad movie recommendation, and I have to put Scooby-Doo out there. Yes, that early 2000s garbage Scooby-Doo movie, because I pretty much want to recommend all Scooby-Doo. There's so much Scooby-Doo on HBO Max. They have the original Scooby-Doo Where Are You show, they aforementioned movie, as well as that new Scoob movie, which I have not been able to bring myself to watch yet. I don't know if I can do it. But I love Scooby-Doo. It's the cartoon that got me into all kinds of spooky stuff. And so I might be a bit of a man-child, but I like to watch it every now and then. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I greatly appreciate it as always. Let me know what your favorites are in the comments below. Feel free to follow me on Instagram. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any creepy content. That's it for this video, but I won't stop you from watching another.